Getting DJ Leaf all of obviously Limp Bizkit and House of Pain to scratch on Still Running was probably still like the top tier coolest moment of my life. I think I'll definitely die happy now. Um, he once messaged me on Instagram saying, go get it, girl. And I think I just went, yeah, I'm, I'm good now. I'm not worried about the album anymore. That's, that's all I needed. I was very much like writing a lot during the lockdown because there was nothing else to do. And it was almost like by accident and like begrudgingly that I wrote an album because I was kind of putting it off and putting it off because I think as an artist, it's something you're so excited about, but also so you want to make sure it's the right time because you only get to do your debut record once. So yeah, it was kind of a moment when I went, oh, I've written an album, haven't I? Like, yeah, that's it. That's what I wanted it to sound like. It was kind of like, because I'd put no pressure on it, I'd managed to make a record not knowing I was making a record and you know I had so much time on my hands as did everyone and like I had no I'm get, I get really bad FOMO I'm like all the time and there was literally no one was doing anything everyone was at home so I like managed to sort of just really like some like yeah just submerge myself in in writing and getting to all like the weird corners of my brain and then oh yeah and then I went oh no I've written an album now you have to put it out <laughs> I worked with um, Susie Shin remotely in the lockdown, which was super exciting, um, um, but decided to go with Larry Hibbert because he's my name soulmate um, in London to record. We basically have the same name. So his name is Lawrence Hibbert and my name is Lauren Hibbert. So it felt like a sign um, that we should work together on this record. Um, and also because everything was kind of tricky at the time, flying out to America wasn't kind of feasible. And I really wanted to be present in making the record and I didn't want to make a record on, on Zoom. So um, being in the studio with Larry was so much fun. And he just totally got everything I said from the off. There was no like compromising on the record. You know, we were just very lucky, like every sort of decision we came to, we agreed on and it was like, oh yeah you know we liked the same everything so it worked out really really well and he's also obsessed with lunch as am I so yeah it was very much um we wanted to make sort of a record that sounded out of place in 2022 and very much more reminiscent of of kind of like all the off-kilter genres of the 90s that sort of like um beach rock and all those kind of weird references and like you know garage garage kind of grunge and we were listening to obviously lots of Weezer records even like Nirvana, Limp Bizkit, we were listening to loads of stuff um before we were before we went in to record to make sure we were all on the same base we watched a lot of films together and stuff like that because it did kind of feel very soundtracky to me like a lot of the songs felt like title tracks, if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, it was definitely a big conversation of of like, what are we going for here? And then we decided on just loads of 90 subgenres. That was sort of like where we left it. We were like, what are we doing? Oh yeah, loads of 90 subgenres. That's that's the answer. So, so I had Garage Band Superstar written down on the notes, like on my phone, ages like for ages before starting writing any of the records. I had that written down. Um, and there was just something about it. I kind of felt like it was this like world that I hadn't like unlocked yet. I thought like maybe I was going to invent like a video game or something and call it Garage Band Superstar, like Guitar Hero, but on an app is what was my original idea, which interestingly enough, didn't happen, but decided to make a record around the whole thing instead. Um, and it was the first song I wrote on the album as well. And it kind of just pieced everything together for me. Um, and made like this literal sense as well as this really funny imaginary Wayne's World style idea I had, you know, in a very sort of matter of fact way, I did demo all of these songs up on GarageBand. And I did also feel like a hella mega superstar in the process of doing that. So it did work out both ways. Um, and I just, yeah, I just love how it sounds. I think it's like, do you want to be a GarageBand superstar? Yes, I want to be a GarageBand superstar. Like it just feels, like a funny TV show. Yeah, I mean, I've always loved collaborating with, with artists and I think, weirdly enough, it doesn't happen so much in the rock world, um, but it happens a lot kind of in, in hip hop um, and I'm a big fan of that. So I was really keen to get as many people on the album as possible. Um, kind of 
did aim high and did achieve some big results. Um, getting DJ lethal of obviously Limp Bizkit and House of Pain to scratch on Still Running was probably still like the top tier coolest moment of my life. I think I'll definitely die happy now. Um, he once messaged me on Instagram saying, go get it girl. And I think I just went, yeah, I'm, I'm good now. I'm not worried about the album anymore. That's, that's all I needed. Um, as well as obviously Wheatus. I mean, Brendan B. Brown of Wheatus, Teenage Dirtbag is the anthem of all generations forever and always um and definitely influenced this whole like weird world thing i was creating there's something about that kind of being the last pick for the football team thing that really resonates with me um so yeah that having him on the title track this whole what started the whole thing this mad idea from a note on my phone having him feature on it is just <laughs> absolutely crazy so it's amazing what you can achieve from an Instagram DM, for sure. Um, and then also I've got um, one of my really good friends, VG, who's an up and coming artist and she's featuring on Hot Boys. Um, and she's just so, so cool. Um, and her vocal fits perfectly on it. And it's just really exciting. I mean, as soon as we um, toured with them, I after like night one, I was in love. You know, they are such a good band, such nice people. And Lydia is such a great front woman. And that, I think that was the first time I'd, I'd like watched a band and been like, oh my God, I need to move. Like, <laughs> I can't just stand here and sing. Like, I've got to get these people on board. And she's so good at that. She's such a natural. And I came off that tour feeling super inspired and then wrote, how am I still alive? And I got this sort of really big, like regrets Lydia energy from it. And I was like, oh, I'll send it to her and ask if it's something she'd want to do. She'd probably say no. And then when she come back and said, yeah, I was so excited. It was just so cool. Yeah, to go and meet them, tour with them and then release a song featuring them was just so cool. And, you know, we still chat now um, in their new album, Further Joy is just awesome. At the start, I was quite wary on what tracks to put in because I know how scatty I am and I knew I'd change my mind on what songs were going to be singles like 300 times. And I have. So learning from myself, um, I think we've played pretty much all the songs live, but like accidentally. So we'll like creep one in every show and I'll be like, mm, how did that go as a little gauger? But um, there's a track called Average Joe on the record that seems to go down really well live and it's so fun to play. And it kind of makes me feel like a football hooligan and I'm like not that not that person at all but I do feel like it could be like a beer garden song like when the world cup's on or something and I don't know why it works at festivals but it really does it's like really easy and people can sing along and stuff and it it really works but still running always goes down so well and I think people are impressed by my fast talking it's not rapping it's definitely just fast talking um and I have to do all these weird like hand actions to keep me in check so I know where I am. Um, and it must look like I'm doing some sort of magic trick. Um, so that always goes down well. Um, as well as the new single, That Was A Joke. Um, it's like got loads of funny bells and stuff in it. And I think people are like, it's not Christmas yet. Stop it. But we do it anyway.